After Sun. Directed by Charlotte Wells, it sees Sophie reflect on a vacation with her loving, not always there father from her adolescence some 20 years later. Her father, the charming and handsome Callum, is every bit as lost in life as she is, making for an emotional journey as the viewer joins Sophie in trying to appreciate an imperfect relationship. Good synopsis there? Yeah, very good. Great and synopsis. also 2022, huge year for uh, guys named Colum who are just lost and in very depressing movies. That's right. Colum famously played by Brendan Gleeson in The Banshees of Inisherin. Ah! This is a 96% critic score on Rotten Tomatoes and a 79 audience score gotta ask the audience to get a life because this is a fantastic movie it obviously does as you mentioned stay with the very popular theme of sad dude movies this year banshees the whale jackass forever toss this right (laughs) in there just sad dudes doing uh sad dude things as i mentioned this was directed by charlotte wells but i got huge sean baker vibes off of it who's sean baker the Florida Project, yeah, yeah, Red yeah. Rocket, mm-hmm. that okay. sort of thing. Yeah. And maybe it's because it had such a vacation-y setting and was kind of grim. And it's but, and it's like hyper-focused. Yes. I also loved this movie. Yeah, I, I really loved this movie. And A24, by the way. Of, so, of course, we loved it. Uh, but 2022, big year for depressing movies, but big year for just like examining human character and... Like, I think that's those things go hand in hand sometimes. Yeah. Uh, this movie is really, really great at um, depression, like shining a light on depression. Yeah. And the thing of um, just understanding that a lot of things can be true at the same time, like the character of Colm, he's 30 something. Uh, not happy with his lot in life, ultimately not doing well, even though he's got a beautiful, healthy daughter. Um, he's not married to the uh, to the mother of this child. He's on vacation with her. And although he clearly loves his daughter... And he, is good to his daughter yeah, for, for the most part, yeah. He does not like being a father and probably wasn't cut out to be a father. And I think that's something that I think a lot of non-parents, if they don't think about it, I don't know, maybe they should or maybe this is like a common worry like hey what if i wouldn't be a good parent or like what if you have the kid there's a don draper monologue of like the baby comes out you hold it you look at it and you know you're supposed to feel something and you don't and you hate yourself for it and then one day like five years later something happens and suddenly you get it like that sort of grim but also like kind of believable thing because you Mm -hmm. learn from things like love or friendship or whatever that your what you're initially taught about life it's not always as clean yeah it's not always it's not always as like very clear cut as what you're told it is sometimes yeah so you're rooting for this guy and you're rooting for this kid to have like a better time but also you're like fuck this is not a clean relationship at all i my takeaway though wasn't like he doesn't like being a father like that wasn't my takeaway it was just that like he has this like has a pretty good relationship with his daughter like there's shared love there they're good to each other but like this guy still clearly clearly has like a hole in his like spiritual existence and he is very unfulfilled and very unhappy with his life yeah i didn't come away being like oh he would he wishes he wasn't her father or something. I don't think that he necessarily actively wishes. I, I I think, though, that he thinks he shouldn't be a father and that whatever he's doing and where he is isn't where he's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And he's more kind of wondering how we got there versus yeah. where do I go from here? And that's the thing. Like, I think a lot of people get that when they're down in the dumps. Like, they don't actually think through where do I go from here. They just think like, well, what the fuck is this and why am I here versus, okay, what's my next step? I think that he very much feels stuck. He doesn't have a lot of money. He knows that he's not going to be the best dad because he's not always emotionally present there. 
And there are so many great scenes between the two characters that show that. In the scene where she's asking him where, I think she's 11, I believe, and she says, uh, when you, like, all right, so you're 35 or whatever. When you were 11, what did you think you'd be doing at 35? And he's like, yo, turn that camera off yeah. right now. And I think that's like, you could ask most pe like 35-year-olds or 29-year-olds that or whatever, and they'd feel the same way because you think, okay, well, at this point, I'll have everything figured out. And what you learn as you get older is you're never going to have everything figured out, and you're never going to totally feel like you're nailing it unless uh, you have an unhealthy relationship with, uh, with yourself. So... There is just so many good scenes between these two characters. The one that like really hit me the most was like the there they, there was like uh, a sequence where like they had a really good day, and everything seemed to be like, wow, this vacation's going well. And he goes up to the hotel room by himself and just has like a complete breakdown and like just starts crying on the bed and like that's the point where you're like, oh man, like it doesn't matter what goes right for this guy in like small moments or whatever. Like at the end of the day, he's going back to like be with himself and that is not comfortable for him. Yeah. I mean, he tells a stranger that he wants to die. At what point? I don't remember that. When they're, uh, I think it's their scuba diving and, uh, he's talking to a guy, the guy that works there and, he says, like, hey, so uh, what brings you here? And he said, well, I lived here, and then I traveled around the world and everything. But then, you know what? I just found that as much as I loved traveling, I loved home more. And now I'm whatever age. And uh, he says, uh, he's like, and then I'll be 30 or whatever. And the column says, uh, I can't see myself ever being 40. Yeah, and then he yeah says, that's right. Like, I forgot about that. To be honest, I didn't see myself uh, yeah. hitting 30. And you're like, fuck, you just met that dude. Mm -hmm. All around great performances in this movie, too. Yeah. Uh, Paul Mezcal. Uh, yes. Extremely, extremely good. Uh, Frankie Corio plays Sophie Patterson. Yeah. Um, and she is really, really great in this as well. Yeah. I Just a, a really great movie. Probably is not going to be for everybody. Like I would say, you know, you know, to the to the Florida Project uh, comparison, like that's not a movie that everybody's going to love. Either. Right. It's it's I would say, would you say it's like fair to call this movie like a vignette? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas sure. like, where like the Florida Project, like it's not going to tell a complete story. It's going to highlight a specific thing mm -hmm. and like its importance to somebody's life. Right. And I think that that's very cool. And it, I mean, it skips ahead to a kind of predictable spot, mm -hmm. but it explains why that trip would be so important to that person and why they always it, be thinking about it. And it explains like why this movie is being made and why it's why it's being highlighted. So I gave it a four point five. Would you would you give it? I would. Yeah. So I mean, I do it based on like eighties, nineties, and. It's it's absolutely in the nineties for me, so I give it four and a half stars. Yeah, this would be like if if we did it out of a hundred, this would be like ninety-three-ish yeah. for me. 